Cam here from Xano Support, and today we're going to be going ahead and covering external API requests. We're going to be taking a look at what it is and what features come with it, as well as taking a look at curl commands and how we can use those when building our external API requests. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So just starting out, I have a blank canvas here by the name of external API request, and there's nothing here. This is just a custom function. What I'll do though, is I will add an external API request. It's right at the top here, and I'll add this to my function stack. If you don't see it, you can just type in external API request. When you click it open, that panel slides out from the right-hand side, and we're given a, a couple different options. Here's our input panel, but we also have our output, our security, and our settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at what these values are. For our inputs, right at the very top, we have this import curl button. We're going to explore in just a little bit with an example, but in the meantime, we have our URL, which is going to be the location of the resource. We have our method. This is if we're getting a value, if we're creating a value, if we're updating a value, if we're deleting a value, and so on. We have our parameters, which are key value pairs specified by the third-party service that we're connecting to to get us the information that we want. We have our headers, which is useful for specifying content type or authorization. And then we have a timeout here, which essentially is if it's running for this amount of seconds, go ahead and time that API response or go ahead and time out that API. And we have the follow location, which is uh, useful if we're making a request and the server responds with a 301 or a 302, letting us know that we're being redirected. This helps us follow that redirect. Otherwise, we can set it to false and we don't have to follow it. Our output tab, this is where we go ahead and set the variable name. And then we have our security tab, which is super useful for bolstering security. At the top, we have host verification, and this enforces that the requested host matches the SSL certificate. So we're just ensuring that this SSL certificate matches with the host. We have peer verification, which is very similar. In this case, we're using a trusted uh, authority figure to ensure that that SSL certificate is not fraudulent, it's real, and it works. We also then have the SSL authentication panel and the CA certificate panel, or options, I should say. These are going to accept text inputs. The SSL authentication and CA certificate are typically provided by the third-party service that you're trying to connect to, where they'll provide you with this uh, or these documents. Then they'll inform you that you need to use them when you're making API requests. To use them, you would simply open them up on your computer, and you would extract the text content, typically where it says begin private key here and end private key here. You would take all of that text and put it in these text inputs. Lastly, we have our settings, and our settings really is just useful for writing a description. But these are the four tabs that you're presented with, and now let's focus on the import curl button. So for this example, we'll be taking a look at SendGrid. We're looking at mail send v3. This is going to allow us to send emails. And so what we can do, and oftentimes, depending on the third-party service, at least that you're connecting to, you'll be presented with documentation on their API requests or their endpoints. And in this documentation, you'll see curl. Now, if you don't see curl and you just see the JSON, we'll also cover that. But if you do see curl, you'll go ahead and, and typically there's a button to click to copy. But if there isn't, you'll just go ahead and copy it all. And then once you have, you'll head back into Xano. Inside Xano, you'll go to that import curl and you'll paste your value. Clicking save, you can go ahead and then see that everything updated very quickly, almost instantaneously, where we have the URL that's been filled out. We have the method that's been filled out. All of our parameters have been filled out. You can see there are a lot of parameters. So it saves us a lot of time from having to click and write all this information out ourselves. At the end, you also see the headers, which have also been populated, our authorization header and the content type. If you click on authorization, you can see that all we need to do is update this with our information. So if we click save, we would be ready to go and make this request. But before we do anything of that nature, I want to show you what it looks like when you don't have the curl. So let's go ahead and head back to our example. And I'm simply going to copy all of this JSON that exists within the curl. This is valid JSON. Even though it's wrapped in curl, this is still valid JSON. So once I have my valid JSON, I can add it to where it needs to be added. In this case, the parameters. I'll go ahead and paste it 
And then Xano automatically knows, hey, this is JSON. What do you want to do with it? Do you want it to be raw JSON or would you like there to be filters? Personally, I like there to be filters. This way I can go ahead and easily modify the content and make it dynamic. And let's go ahead and explore that real quick. So I'll save that. I'll go ahead and add an input. Uh, let's add an email input. So we'll just call it email. And within this API request, now mind you, there's no URL or anything of the sort. This would have to be procured manually. But within our parameters that we have uh, inputted here or inserted here, we can go ahead and make these dynamics. So let's just focus right on the two here. We're seeing that we're pushing an array of emails into our two key. What we'll do is we'll select this value here, John Doe at example.com, and you can see that we can make it dynamic. So we can make these API requests to these third-party services we're trying to connect to completely dynamic. And it is that simple. Now, of course, you're going to want to go ahead and fill out your URL, your method, and your authorization headers as they, um, as they're requested by the third-party service that you're trying to connect to. But the external API request function makes it very easy to do so. Now, one thing I would like to do is I don't want to use SimGrid as an example because I'd have to set up a key and I don't have a key. But what I can do is I can show us what it looks like to import dummy data. And so we have another video on this, but I want to go ahead and demonstrate just how easy it is and what it looks like. So what we have here, this is dummyjson.com. I use this all the time to populate my database with test and fake data. What we can do is we can go ahead and focus on getting all of our products. This is our URL. And so depending on the third party service that you're connecting to, like I said, sometimes they have curl, sometimes they don't. And in this case, there is no curl. This is a fetch request. What we're going to do though, is we're going to take that URL. We can see that there are no other parameters that come with it. Unless we wanted to, of course, add parameters, you can see here, they do provide us these examples. But just for the sake of this demonstration, we have the ability to use just the URL. So I'll create a new external API request. I'll put that URL here. We are going to be getting the values and we'll update our response so that it is returning API 3. When I run this, and we can ignore the email right now, we don't, we're not passing that in, but when we run it, we can see that this is what the response looks like. We have our request and then we have our response and our response is going to contain our headers and our result. The result here, these are all of our products, which is a total of 30. There are a total of 100 in total, but we've only returned 30. Going back to our documentation, we can take a look at how we can then adjust the amount that we're being returned. If we look here, it says limit and skip products. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. We want to go ahead and limit more than 30. So we know that the parameter here is going to be limit equals 10. If we head back into our API response for our parameters, we can go ahead and set, let's say limit, and we'll do 50 in this case. We'll go ahead and click save and run again. And when we do so, we can go ahead and collapse our products and see that now we have a total of 50 products. If we wanted to, we could make this dynamic. So we can go ahead and say this uh, is called limit. And once we have our limit value, we'll simply just go to that object we had set. And for the value, we'll make it dynamic. We'll go ahead and click save and then run this with a new limit of 100. When we click run, going to now return us our products with 100 items. So. The external API request is remarkably simple and easy to use and allows you to connect to third-party services to leverage their functionality and their data so that you can make your application that much better. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave those in the YouTube comment section down below. Or you can reach out to us within your instance by clicking the left sidebar and reaching out to support chat. Or of course, you can always reach out to us on the community forum. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, have a good one.